くと聞くあつもの汗じゃろアニメ最高のショー Welcome to t a k o s a g e e k s c o m Justin here, back with more essential anime. This is episode 75. Wow. 75 episodes. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for tuning in who watched it from the beginning.、Uh, I wanted to do this because I've always loved my old school anime, especially the way anime is going with a particular genre just dominating it. Ishikai, I know it's popular, I get it. But I like. Like, I've been saying in every episode, not to sound like a bro- broken record, but these old school 80s and 90s, and even some of the 70s animes, they, I felt like they took a lot of artistic chances, a lot more originality in their presentation. And it was just really, I think, anime when it was at its pure peak and dominance when it comes to craft and storytelling. And today we're going to be talking about one of those animes, which is Pat Labor. And I'm not going to just pick out a single one. I'm not going to be just talking about Pat Labor 2, the movie, which is my favorite iteration of it. I'm not talking about Pat Labor 1, the movie.、I'm、not talking about the live action. Not just talking about the OVA. And I'm not just talking about the series, spinoffs, e x a c t or et cetera. I just want to talk about Pat Labor overall and what makes it so great. I mean, this series blends sci fi fiction, mech action, slice of life, offers a very unique. Enduring appeal on technology, and it's a compelling story. For those who don't know, Pat Laborer it stands for Patrol Laborer, and it does combine various genres that I just named. And it's not just about mechs, it has elements of slice of life in there where we just like Robotech, Mac Cross, Mobile Suit Gundam, Evangelion, Escaflon. I like though, Esca- yeah, es- Escaflon. I like animes like that because it's, while it is technically mech anime, action anime, these all have human elements with engaging, compelling characters. And these members of the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Special Vehicle Section 2 Division 2 Force. <laughs> yes, I did it without t r e v o r which is great. These are relatable, flawed individuals. Izumi, who loves her labor to death, labor is what they call their mechs in this series. And then we have the, y- the laid back Captain Goto. You know, they each have character depth and charm that they bring to the series. They have inter-、uh, interactions and personal growth. It's not just all about the action. You know, it's set in a near future in Tokyo where these laborers, which, aka the mechs, Are doing mundane, mundane tasks such as construction and police work. And they approach that in such a relatable way that it basically, even though it's set in the future, people who are watching it at the time can relate to certain things that were going on with these people. You know, it had a realistic depiction of technology and how it would integrate in everyday life. And giving it some type of authenticity, authentic feel, making it something that people can watch and go, you know what, I can relate to this more than I can relate to something like、uh, um, a Gundam. Or, or don't get me wrong, Gundam is freaking great. And, but some people, I know some people that like Pat Labor a little bit more because they felt the characters were a little bit more relatable because some people can't re- relate to war as, as opposed to this. But it's also the blend of genres that they always play with. There might be an episode where you get something serious, but then it could be a humorous, lighthearted episode. You know, especially when it came to the show, it was a mix of episodic adventures. So it, it felt self contained, but it was also interconnected at times. And I thought they did very well of addressing certain themes in there, such as technology, law. Honor, duty, and things of that nature. And this is created by,、uh, by the same people who have done such films as Ghost in the Shell. I know we've been covering a lot of his, but we, we, we see his work and we've seen what he's able to create in terms of anime. And speaking of anime, let's talk about the animation here. The laborers, the designs still hold up to this day. The realistic movements that they were able to do, the urban landscapes, the way they were able to depict Tokyo at the time, like this. It was just an amazing anime. 
It's more accessible than ever these days. You have the various series, you have the movies, you have the OVAs. They're all in high definition, DVD, Blu-ray. I'm not sure if it's on Crunchyroll. I have to double check with that. But Black Labor just stands out. It's essential anime. It's innovative. It has relatable characters, a realistic setting, engaging storylines. It has influence. Some of the designs of the labors are still seen in mechs. It's referenced a lot in anime. Um, it's just a really good mech anime. You're going to have a good time watching this one. That's why it's definitely worthy. Definitely add this to your collection. This is Justin from AtakosandGeeks.com. Comment below. Let me know. Have you ever seen Pat Labor? Which iteration of Pat Labor do you like? Do you like the series? Do you like the OVAs? Do you like the movies? Which one of the movies do you like more? Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Helps out the algorithm a lot. And if you like what we do here, browse the Tacos and Geeks. Check out our work. And catch you on the next one. Peace, love, and happiness. Later days.